The suspect in the failed Times Square bomb attempt is in custody and the government's calling it a quick win. But one striking detail seems to have disappeared from the story. An early CBS report read, quote, Army intelligence planes led to suspect's arrest. Within an hour, all mention of that was scrubbed and other networks have yet to pick it up. As our friend Jeremy Scahill reports, the two guys running the investigation have deep backgrounds in secret Pentagon special access programs. Now, if secret special ops and their planes are acting on U.S. soil, that's nothing to be too casual about. Faisal Shahzad is now in custody. Fine, but if we're really going to okay domestic special ops and give up the privacy that comes with that, I can think of a whole lot of potential uses for military tech. How about surveilling scofflaw oil companies from the air, perhaps? Or sending bunker buster tech down dangerous mine shafts? I've got a long list of national security threats, in fact. Have you got one? Share it with me, laura at grittv.org. I'd love to take a look. Next up, what are the chances that the fisher people in the Gulf will have more luck than their Alaskan counterparts? We'll hear from lawyer Mike Papantonio coming up. There's nothing for us to do. I mean, Mother Nature is going to take its course no matter what. And I don't think the way it's spilling into the Gulf, I don't see no chance of them cleaning up it, the mess. And it could put us out of work for two to three years, maybe. Who knows, maybe longer. Because they ain't really telling us what's going on out there. They're just telling you what you want to hear. We're the bad one right now. And anybody, anybody that don't get the money is nothing. Staying home and something like that. Just keep waiting. Except they're not just waiting. They're going to court. And with us next, one of their attorneys. He's an attorney in Pensacola, Florida, and the co-host of the nationally syndicated radio show, Ring of Fire. Mike Papantonio, welcome to Grit TV. How are you? How are you? Start by telling us again about your case. Um, what are the violations that you're charging here? Laura, one thing you always do is you talk on your show about stories that aren't being talked about. So let me begin there. Here, here it is. Uh, you, as you as you may or may not know, Bobby Kennedy and I used to be prosecutors, both of us prosecutors. And I think about this case in these terms. If if we're going to trial, it's not often since we prosecuted that we're going to be able to put a defendant on the stand in, in the first words out of our mouth. Are, are, we're going to be able to say that they're convicted felons. Here we have a company that is a convicted felon, had to plead guilty to, to felonies in Texas for killing 15 people and injuring 170 in that refinery case. Now, the reason that's important is because part of what you have to consider as you listen to what BP is spinning out there is the believability of this witness, the believability of this character. You see, the U.S. Supreme Court told us now we have to treat a corporation like a person. So let's look at this person. Along with these felony charges for wanton, reckless conduct that ended up in the deaths of these people, we, we now find, in addition to that, you've got uh, uh, the $300 million fine for basically fraud. Well, it was fraud. They manipulated the markets all over the world on propane. What's important about this, this is what we enter what we call the discovery process with. This is what we enter a trial with. I stand up in opening statements and I talk about these things. We caught them manipulating. We caught them uh, having to plead to felonies. And so now, uh, in addition to that, this character that we're talking about, this person, this corporate person that's a felon, the corporate person now that's been charged with one of the biggest fraud fines in America, $300 million, for lying to all of us about the price of propane, along with other things that we're going to be talking about as this goes on. But now, we, this character, we have to say, now is operating one of the biggest oil rigs in the world. It's called the BP Atlantis. This is a story people aren't talking about. It's five times as big as the horizon, and a whistleblower has come to us and said, look, this is a ticking time bomb. What you have is you have all types of rampant safety violations that are taking place on this thing. There's a failure, and a failure on this massive rig, if it takes place, will dwarf anything that we've seen so far. So you look at this character that we've talked about, the convicted felon, the person who had to change, who had to pay $300 million for lying to all of America, mom and pop, about their propane during the winter so they could raise prices. Now we find they're in control of one of the biggest rigs in the world, rop, operating in our Gulf, that somebody's saying, look, 
It is a ticking time bomb. So put all of this together and you kind of see the you see the anatomy of this case. It's it's a case that when it goes to trial, it's going to be a very ugly picture. You've got Dick Cheney in the mix here, too. How? Well, Dick Cheney, this story goes, this, this is an easy story to follow. In 1999, the mineral management uh, group said, look, we have to have certain violations. We, we have to have, we have to avoid violations by having safety mechanisms that protect the public from an explosion just like this. And what it was, it was, it was an easy fix, Laura. It was a 500, uh, $500 million dollar, uh, 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 basically a, a, a valve that could have been triggered anywhere. It didn't have to be triggered on the, on the site. It could have been triggered off-site. And the point is this. They chose not to do that because they got a break. The BP got a break when Dick Cheney met behind closed doors. You remember the, the behind closed doors energy uh, uh, secret meetings that took place? Well, you know, we've asked for those documents before now. We were told by, by Scalia, Cheney's hunting buddy, that we couldn't get them. This changes all that, Laura. Now we, now we see that mineral management in 2003 completely changed their policy after those closed door meetings. And not all, and this is just the beginning of what they changed. In this business, just like we see with the FDA, SEC, OSHA, you name it, the deregulatory effort that was made by Dick Cheney and George Bush has come home to roost in the petroleum industry. And what happens? We see this thing called a captive agency. It is where Billy Bob down here in Florida works for the DEP. Billy Bob wants a job in the next two years. So this character, this felon character, pats him on the back. BP pats him on the back, says, Billy Bob, we're going to give you a job. All you have to do is go out to the community and lie about how serious this is. We don't just have Billy Bob doing that. We have, uh, we have a candidate who's running for governor of the state of Florida that has become a lap dog already. McCollum has become a lap dog for this industry, going site to site, telling people that he believes in BP, just like Sarah Palin is telling. We believe in BP. These people are, are they're paid for hustlers. Now, one of the yeah. other people that is going, coast, uh, going door to door are the agents of BP who, as I understand, it are inviting very needy fisher people and shrimpers like those you're representing to come and participate in cleanup crews, but there's some small print involved, and it looks like they're forcing some of those folks to sign away their rights. What's going on? It's worse than that. It's worse than that. What they do is they have this big push. We need your boat. We know you need money. We're going to pay you X number of dollars a day. Go look at what happened in Louisiana when they made that promise. There is a fraction. That, matter of fact, people are lined up saying, okay, here I am. Here's my boat. You said you were going to hire me. Hire me. They're not doing that hiring because, listen, Laura, we found a document that is a remarkable document. It's a document that has laid out the plan that BP uses in a catastrophic event like this. The plan begins by, first of all, very, very, very simple. They say the first thing that we have to do is we have to minimize the severity of it. Remember how this started. Day one, gee, there's no problem. Day two, there might be a problem, but it's not a big problem. Day three, it's 45 you know, 45,000 gallons a, a, a day. The next day, it's 200,000 gallons. So part of their blueprint that we have, and, and we're going to use it in trial, is that they begin with this denial. Then what they do is they say it's called the crank down. The crank down is after, after they're caught, after somebody says, well, you know, you lied to us. Well, after they're caught, what they say, well, is we just didn't have all the facts. It was something that nobody could anticipate. Uh, and so what they do is they bring in their talking heads, their shills, like McCollum, or like Rubio down here in Florida, and they say, gee, BP couldn't help it. So that's part of the crank down. The other about thing 10 is, seconds, Mike. The other thing is they get the media involved, and the media is, is a love fest with the media. Laura, that's it. That, that's it in a nutshell. It's uglier than that. Have me back on, and I'll tell you more. We will definitely have you back on, Mike. Can't wait to continue following this story and to check out Ring of Fire this weekend. Thanks so much for being with us on the show, and keep up the great work.